Joseph Franklin Necro. His star shone brightly in the city of Houston for 11 years, and it still does. Joe is still the winningest pitcher in Astros history with 144 victories in a Houston uniform. He's tied with Roy Oswald for the most 20 win seasons. He led the Astros in wins and innings pitched for five years. He's tied with Mike Scott for the most career shutouts. And he came in a very close second to Bruce Souter in the 1979 Cy Young voting. But who can ever forget Joe pitching the Astros into their first playoff series, shutting out the Dodgers on a Monday afternoon in Los Angeles in 1980. Astros owner Drayton McLean is one of our honorary chairs tonight. Joe Negro was a, a great player for the Houston Astros, and he was before my ownership, but I have, have talked to a lot of people about him, and they just said that he was what the Astros want to be, a champion. But that bright star was dimmed in October 2006. A brain aneurysm took him from us too suddenly, much too early, which is why we're here tonight. Joe's daughter, Natalie, doesn't want any other families to go through what the Necros did nearly three years ago. I don't want people to have to go through what our family has gone through in losing such a loved one. And I think that it is so important, like I mentioned before, that we just get the, the information, the awareness, the research, and the treatment out there and available to the public. Natalie formed the Joe Necro Foundation in 2007 to honor her dad, raise awareness, and raise money to support brain aneurysm research, support patients, and to educate. Enos Cabell was Joe's teammate and close friend with the Astros and knows all too well about how insidious a brain aneurysm can be. Joe is one of my best friends. Uh, we played a long time together. Uh, he was a drinking buddy. Uh, he, he was always there if you needed something. And he always helped the young kids, always did. But sadly, Joe and Enos are linked in another way. My wife died of the same thing. She died of an aneurysm, so it's really important. Uh, and a lot of people didn't, doesn't, don't know about the, uh, the disease. And uh, a lot of people have it in their brains and in their bodies. So when you have an aneurysm, you don't know it. And few know more about dealing with aneurysms than Dr. Robert Grossman, the chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery and director of the Methodist Neurological Institute. Dr. Grossman is also an honorary chair of tonight's knuckleball. About one in 50 people has a weak spot in the blood vessel in the brain. Fortunately, they don't all rupture or break. Every year, uh, about 2% uh, <clears throat> of people who have aneurysms will have a hemorrhage. So in Houston, for instance, there are about six or 700 people a year who will experience a stroke from the rupture of an aneurysm. It's people like Dr. Grossman and Methodist President and CEO Ron Gerardo that helps make the partnership between the Joe Necro Foundation and Methodist Hospital one that hopefully will benefit many. The meaning and, and the significance of the, uh, the uh, Necro Foundation and recognizing the Methodist Hospital's Neurological Institute, this is a primary focus of uh, our activities at the hospital. It's one of our centers of excellence. And then to be able to have the support and recognition from the foundation to support our activities, it, it's huge for us. And also, I might add, uh, this is in conjunction with the Houston Astros, and I, I really feel uh, that it's appropriate to recognize Drayton McLean, Pam Gardner, and the Astros for their support of this event. Joe Necro loved playing for the Houston Astros. Astros fans know what his talent and outgoing personality meant to the success of this team. Joe had a passion that's been inherited by his daughter, Natalie. The pain Natalie still feels when she recounts Joe's final hours is something she wants no one else to have to bear. I was um, shocked at first, and it wasn't until I traveled back to Florida to see him in the hospital. We kept him on life support so that the family could come back and, and see him. Um, it really didn't hit me for several weeks. And as you can see, it's still really hard for me to talk about, but um, when you lose someone that's so special to you like that, I don't think that you, you truly understand it until you start living your life without them. And when you wake up and you realize that they're not there anymore. But that's part of the reason why I've, I dove into this foundation is because it's my way of keeping my dad alive. And it's, it's creating a legacy and it's creating an honor. And he truly deserves 
and not just for what he's done for the city, but what he did for baseball and what he did for our family and what he did for me.